In Earth's recent history, there's a fascinating story about enormous creatures that once roamed our planet. These massive animals, called megafauna, ruled the ancient world. But their story is one of both wonder and tragedy. Their reign came to a sudden and puzzling end. Welcome to Anthromedia. In this video we will understand whether humans wiped out the giant animals from Earth. Around 35,000 years ago, the world experienced a series of abrupt changes. Climate was becoming warmer, ice sheets melted, and sea level was rising. At the same time, modern humans were reaching to new environments, using advanced tools for survival. Humans and megafauna coexisted for thousands of years. Hunting these massive creatures was a matter of survival. Cave paintings and ancient artifacts reveal our complex relationship with these animals. Megafauna, the giants of the prehistoric world existed on Earth for millions of years. These include huge marine creatures and massive land dinosaurs, as well as today's blue whales. They have played crucial roles in shaping ecosystems as engineers, predators, herbivores, competitors, and mutualistic partners. Some notable examples of megafauna that became extinct during this time include Woolly Mammoth These large, shaggy relatives of modern elephants went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Saber-toothed cats These prehistoric big cats, like Smilodon, became extinct around 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. Giant Ground Sloths Various species of giant ground sloths, including the Megatherium, went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Irish Elk Despite its name, the Irish Elk was a massive deer with enormous antlers that disappeared around 7,700 years ago. Giant Kangaroos Australia was home to several species of large kangaroos, such as the Procoptodon, which went extinct approximately 45,000 years ago. Giant Short-Faced Bear This enormous bear, Arctodus simus, went extinct around 11,000 years ago. American Mastodon. These relatives of mammoths disappeared around 10,000 years ago. Glyptodon. This giant armored mammal, resembling an enormous armadillo, went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Dire Wolf. A larger and more robust cousin of the modern gray wolf, the dire wolf went extinct around 9,500 years ago. Megafauna have faced extinction in the past due to various factors like climate change, volcanic eruptions, asteroid impacts, and changes in the atmosphere. However, in more recent times, particularly during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene, the extinction of many megafauna species has been linked to the direct or indirect influence of modern humans. Early human expansion across the world often coincides with the disappearance of these large animals, by the time human colonization reached even remote islands, numerous species of mammals, birds, and tortoises had gone extinct. The loss of megafauna had significant consequences for ecosystems. These large animals interacted with many other species, including plants, parasites, predators, and prey. Their absence created a cascade effect, impacting the web of life in various ways. The extinction of megafauna not only led to the loss of those animals but also affected species that relied on them. This phenomenon is called co-extinction. It particularly affected organisms with close, specialized relationships with megafauna, such as parasites and mutualistic partners. A recent research looked at the extinction of large mammal species that weighed at least 10 kilograms over a period from 132,000 to 1,000 years ago. They found evidence of 177 such species that went extinct globally or on continents during this time. Africa had 18 extinctions, Asia 38, Australasia 26, Europe 19, North America 43, and South America 62. The study also identified regions where these extinctions were most common. Texas had the highest number of extinct species, 33 species and Uruguay had the highest proportion of extinct species, 78%. Certain areas like Southern South America, Southeast North America, Western Europe, and Southern Australia were identified as extinction hotspots, while Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia had fewer extinctions, considered cold spots. 
The extinction of large animals during the late Quaternary period seems to be closely linked to where humans lived and how long they coexisted with these animals, rather than just climate changes. This pattern is particularly noticeable when comparing South America to Sub-Saharan Africa. In South America, there were significant extinctions of large animals despite the climate not changing drastically. This contrasts with Sub-Saharan Africa, where there were fewer extinctions despite similar climate changes. In South America, some fluctuations in humidity and habitat types might have played a role, but they don't seem to be more significant than in Africa. Additionally, many of the extinct species in South America were adaptable and could switch their diets based on the available food. In North America, even though climate and vegetation didn't change dramatically, there were significant extinctions, especially around 11,500 to 10,000 years ago, which coincided with the arrival of modern humans. Some experts are arguing that climate change alone couldn't have caused the extinction of large animals in Australia. They say there's no clear explanation of how increasing dryness or aridity could have led to the extinction of big animals without affecting smaller ones or making animals adapt to the changing conditions. They also mention that modern large herbivores can survive in dry and changeable climates because they have low energy and water needs, eat various foods, can live in different habitats, and can go without food for a while. In contrast, smaller animals might struggle more when resources become scarcer due to climate change. Overall, this suggests that human activities, such as hunting and habitat modification, played a crucial role in the extinction of these large animals, often more so than climate changes. Those who support climate change as a cause of extinction have to explain why available habitats wouldn't have expanded during Ice Age climates. They point out that as Australia became drier and sea levels dropped, more land became exposed along the coast, forming large plains. These changes should have actually benefited large animals, not caused their extinction. They also mention that there's no strong evidence that the habitats necessary for most big animals got smaller. One theory suggests that the disruption of habitats by early humans could explain extinctions, changes in vegetation, and shifts in climate in central Australia. Between 50,000 and 45,000 years ago, there was a sudden and permanent transformation of landscapes from tree and shrub savannas to the arid scrub we see today. They argue that the only other significant environmental change comparable to this happened when Europeans brought in grazing animals like cattle and rabbits. They also mention evidence of burnt emu eggshells, suggesting that humans interacted with extinct animals. In northern Australia, they found that landscapes managed by indigenous people using fire looked different, which might have made it harder for large animals to find food. The Holocene is a geological epoch that began around 11,700 years ago and continues to the present day. It's characterized by relatively stable climate conditions compared to earlier periods. Monsoons are seasonal winds that bring heavy rainfall during certain times of the year, crucial for agriculture and ecosystems in those regions. Initially, Scientists thought that the Holocene monsoon failure might have been caused by reaching a specific limit or threshold related to water conditions. However, recent research proposes a different explanation. Researchers suggest that early human activities, particularly systematic burning of vegetation, may have played a significant role. Early humans, possibly through intentional use of fire, could have altered the landscape by changing the types and distribution of plants in dry and semi-arid areas. The extinction of large animals wasn't solely due to climate change. Extinctions around the world coincide with the arrival of humans, suggesting a human role. The debate has shifted from climate versus humans, to, how humans did it. They emphasize that studying how climate change, soil conditions, landscape fires, and other ecological factors interacted with human activities is crucial. They also mention that hypotheses should be testable and that various scientific methods, including ecological and evolutionary theories, should be used to gain a better understanding of this prehistoric extinction event.